Well, spring has sprung. Happy Saturday. Welcome along to another edition of The Morning Post. Myself, Dave Orton, joined by Stella Cost for the next hour or so. Stick with us. Live and interactive show. As I always say, thumbs up, like and subscribe. If you're watching on the YouTube channel, that's how you get involved. That is a chat bar, by the way. If uh, That's how you get involved. We've got a big community out there every single Saturday. Love to read the comments. Get involved. Sponsored by William Hill. About an hour and ten, I reckon, we've got left, and we're going to be dual-purposing it. I say spring has sprung, but it's pretty testing underfoot in most places we go to. We'll be talking about what the ground might be like for punters, how challenging it is out there. Get involved. Let us know what your naps are for the weekend. We've still got some Cheltenham fallout to look at. We're going to be talking about the Irish angle with David Jennings as well. In fact, let's go down the panel first, shall we? And I'll tell you what, we've been really chatty in here as we were waiting for the show to go on. Tom Siegel on a Saturday morning in here. It's an absolute surprise and pleasure to have you with us. <laughs> I'm, quite, I'm, quite, I'm quite a regular now, Dave. Quite you are. Regular. No Reading today, of course. No international break, so we, we, we made you coming. I don't know how Reading got called off with an international break. I don't think they got any international <laughs> players. But oh, the Trinidadian <laughs> team are now playing down at Reading, I believe. But anyway, we won't go there, yeah. will we? Tom, great to have you. And I think important to have Tom as well, because it is a tricky time for you out there. Matty Batchelor, a warm welcome back to Racing Post Towers. Pleasure to be that Super sub. I'm like, my football career, I've always come on last on the bench. minute. <laughs> Did you? When someone drops out, call the bat. Did you think you were riding? You got the goggles on, or are you just trying to emulate Tom with the, you know, the sort of peer and? No, <laughs> you I. See. You get old, you can't see. <laughs> That's exactly it. I was in denial for a while. Yeah. All the race cards, racing posts. I thought, why are they printing this print so, so small? small. Wait, no. Yeah, OK, well, I'll be, I'll be the one squinting at the screen. Right, as we do every Saturday, let's open up the trading floor to you. You're going to see the markets move in front of your eyes. Of course, these are all mature now overnight until about 10 minutes before the race. This is what you should be getting. So all the prices available to you. Get your William Hill website up or your app. Let's play, shall we? Let's go to the betting cave because he makes his return to the show. We had to give him a Saturday off last Saturday because I hear Cheltenham warn on Johnny Simpson. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. Yeah, good to be here. It's nice the uh, the flat season uh, is is here, and, and uh, you know I'm looking forward to getting stuck in uh, the Lincoln. Always uh, a competitive race. Yeah, I mean you must be looking at your lips at this one. There have been some gambles which we'll get to, but after Cheltenham, John. I mean we saw the liabilities. You know you sort of dusted yourself off. This is the sort of card you want this afternoon, isn't it? Yeah, the heavy ground. This can also this can throw up some strange results, you know, early season stuff. So uh, I wouldn't be surprised if there's a couple of 33 shots maybe uh, hit the frame or even win today. Just as well, we've got the right panel on. Then David Jennings will be joining us in a little bit. Give us the Irish angle, but also probably stick on talk about all things national. City of Troy chat coming up as well. So stick with us for the next hour or so. John, just before I go through what we've got exactly coming up, shall we? Get this out the way and layers get ready because these are really, really good if you want to go against the green. And um, it's the boost time. Who are we going for? We're going to give uh, Helton a go here. We think he's got down to a price now where we're, we're happy to stand uh, and you know, go against the skeleton, uh, the bandwagon. Obviously, won really well at uh, Newby last time. We're going to go six to four from 11 to 10 for the duration of the show for 50 quid. Wow. All right. There you go. Skeltonham, Heltonham. There you go. The Greatwood Gold Cup winner. He could have gone up more in the weights. I think it's six pounds, isn't it? But we'll be getting into that. Will he have his ground? William Hill think. He is the one to take on today. Of course, at the end of the show, we'll be giving you the apps. They'll be boosted for you price wise as well. But that is now live on the site, all right? So you can get involved, six to four, if you want to have a go at Helton. I mean, anything Skelton's running at the moment is going very close. Let's have a look at exactly what we've got coming up for you then. I'll get the producers to put the bar up. But uh, we're going to go through the papers each and every Saturday. We open it up for you, basically, and show you what you can be getting in your racing post this morning. Saturday previews, quite a few meaty ones coming your way. Good card at Doncaster tomorrow as well. We'll be looking at a feature. William Hill sponsoring all of it as well. Don't worry, Johnny, I got that one out of the way. Irish Angle, DJ comes in. Anti-post preview. This is going to be interesting because we've already had a look at the Grand National on this show, which comes up on April the 13th, of course, but the market has really, really taken off. Great to have Tom with us talking about that in particular. And uh, best bets for the weekend, or, or as we know, naps coming up. And uh, I'll get mine out of the way at the end of the show. All right, OK. Let's get on with it, shall we? And have a look at what you can get, of course, if you're in your members club or indeed you bought the paper this morning. If you want to go out and get it, this is what's available to you. What front page have we got this morning? Oh, yeah, there's a right old gamble going on, isn't there? 
This is an unprecedented double. Look, all the faces coming out. Look, you've been seeing all Nico de Boinville, Henderson, Willie Mullins, Paul Town, and now it changes. Spencer laughing there. He's got a good ride in the spring mile. And, of course, Chaz Mataz, the Irish Raider, coming over. So much to look forward to as the flat season kicks off in style. That's page two. Richard Birch, good to see him on there. Sylvester D'Souza, of course, back in action. Five rides up at Donny today for the former champion. Moving on. Can Liberty Lane end Burke's barren run at Doncaster in the month of March? Well, I could tell you he's tipped him, Graham Robway, so I'm assuming that article says yes, but that would be quite interesting. It's obviously not as easy for cars as you think at this time of year. Linda Riley looks a big price at Newbury for Red Hot Skelton. Yeah, Johnny Deneen's column, wager of the weekend, you can see their grand Al, but that's at Banger, and that has been whacked for Donald McCain. Cobden receives title boost with successful appeal against Ban. Yeah, this was, of course, interference supposedly caused in the... Uh, in the Gallagher novice hurdle, but uh, Coppin can literally do no wrong, walking on water at the minute. And uh, he's got, what, 12 ahead of Sean Bowen, I think? Holloway Boy looks set to hit the ground running for Burke. That's, of course, in the opening race, 120, I think it is, isn't it? Donny, that's a spring mile. Uh, a very classy horse. Carl Burke again. That's Paul Keeley and his Saturday Sizzlers. So we're giving you all that premium content for free. Is that our lot? I'm not sure. It might be our lot. That's it. That's our lot. OK. All right, then. Let's have a little chat then, guys, just before we go into our Saturday previews. It is a tricky time of year. And it's a bit of a worn phrase, this, isn't it? But certainly, you know, as we were walking in today, Tom, you're not far from Newbury. You and Fadija were there yesterday. Very sunny. The going stick says it's low, but they verti drain, apparently. I never really know what that means. But seemingly, it's going to be lower than what it was. Certainly, the chase track at Newbury didn't look that bad at all no, to me yesterday. All yesterday. And yet, they're still saying they were heavy in places before we went on. So much said about these going reports <laughs> before the first race. We won't go there, Jonathan Pullin. But um, tricky task, I suppose. But, you know, up at Doncaster, the heavy's been removed now. But it's going to be really testing. Exactly why is that? Well, to be, to be honest, honestly, I don't know. But... What I would say is that the going stick for Doncaster in the week was in the fours, and it hadn't been ever. I couldn't remember the last time it was in the fours at Doncaster. It never gets that bad. That's Doncaster. low, obviously, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's low. So it was really, really testing. Now it's been drying out a little bit, but it's going to be really soft and testing up there. I think Newby will be Newby will be on the good to soft now. I would imagine. I've just come from there. That's yeah. just my sort of area. It's a nice morning, no rain. And the thing is, the days are getting much longer now, so it's drying out a lot yeah. quicker than it than back in the back in. You know, I'm, I'm staggered. I walked my dog this morning at five o'clock or whatever it was. It wasn't that bad at all. Did you watch any of the Aussie racing this morning? I didn't, no. That's yeah. your domain. I'll, I'll be going there. I'll be going there. <laughs> what, you, what do you mean? You're going to Australia? Well, or you're going, going if there? only, Tom. If only. They keep me Some in here, would say, unfortunately. Can we get rid of you down there? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. They'd love me down there, wouldn't they? Matty, this time of year when you were riding, you know, it's obviously been a drenched winter, but these tracks can dry out very quickly and all of a sudden it just changes. You get horses that look over the top, saw loads of them at Newbury yesterday. Yeah, you can do it. And it's, it's that in between, you want it to dry out quicker because you go from soft, heavy, where you're getting through it a little bit wetter, and then if it dries quick, then you're sort of going to good to soft instead of that horrible, sticky, sticky gluey, stuff, and that's, yeah. that's when it gets hard work. Well, someone who will be relishing that sort of ground, Johnny Simpson. Let's move on to our Saturday previews then, shall we? Let's get stuck straight into the action for punters out there. And it is the Doncaster Mile. You'll be loving this if it's horrible underfoot, Johnny Simpson. Who currently is your market leader? Has the market finally seen sense, I wonder? Uh, they're not making their mind up just yet on who wants to do a favourite. I wish to say we're playing three places here instead of two, so uh, a little bit of each way value here throughout the, uh, throughout the card at Doncaster, in fact. Uh, there's not a lot between uh, Charing and Knight, 5-2 uh, and 7-2. Uh, to two. There's been a little bit of support for Astral Bow. Uh, Holloway Boy is really weak. That was 7-2 to two earlier in the week. Can't give that one away. But there's a little bit of money for Dashing Roger, who was 40-1 to one, uh, on Monday. He's now into 16-1. to one. So that is the, that is the move of Dashing Roger. That'll be an egg on face horse for a lot of people. And every time that encounters heavy, kills usually tips it, <laughs> and he hasn't done. So three places on that race. We're going to need it, I think. Uh, Tom Knight looks like he's been easy to back. He was the original favourite, I think, for Simon and Ed Christmas. We should say that a while is out of the Lincoln. Two nons and he, unfortunately, a vet certificate for a while last year's second fancy by many. I think, he's, I think I saw two to one in a place about Knight. He was earlier in the week. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, he's, he hasn't won. He didn't win last year, did he? He ran some good races in Listed and Group 2 company. He likes soft ground. He's got the visor on the first time. Sam and Christopher have been going well in, in Dubai. So I can see why people fancy him. Not quite sure what to make of him. I mean, the visor first time up. 
first start of the season strikes me as though they're not act they've never been that happy with him last year. So I think Astral Bow and Charin stand out for me. Yeah. I well, mean that Holloway boy on his old form, on his was he third in the Vertem Futurity? Yes, that was when he ran halfway across yeah. to Fontwell. Like, oh, that's like right, he did. Dan won it, didn't he? <laughs> yeah, uh, and... Uh, so it's not bad form, that, but he's very weak in the market this morning. The it? one thing she's got, Tom, over the three around her in the betting Astral Bow is that he's a winner. Uh, they haven't won since two-year-old career, all of these, have they? No. Holloway Boy no. and Charon as well. Charon was running in top races, though, wasn't he? Yes. Sharon was running in the, yeah. in the Irish Guineas and the and the St James's Palace and all, races like that. I mean, potentially. He won a Group Two as a juvenile in France, so there's, there's good form. He there. should like the ground. Love the ground. Even that Paddington form. Yeah. A, if he gets within a length of this, he's going to be good enough. I, to... I, I would think so. But oh, Astral so. Bow's dangerous because she won the race last year. I like very Astral Bow. Yeah, it Pam a, Sly. I like Pam her Sly. As a trainer. Yeah, uh, she, and she will just slop through it, won't she? And, and, and she'll probably. That's how bad it is. Put some solid efforts in group company. Yeah. So it. Well, you, it was you a know, much... being the Australian thing, she ran in the Dahlia last year and she was third to Via Sestina. Who... Tell us, Dave, what happened this Absolutely morning? Absolutely hosed up on her Australian debut. Five and a half million guineas. They paid Chris Waller and Yulong Investments. And uh, she, she won... A very, was it the Ramvit Stakes she won? I think it was. It was a Group 1. She absolutely hosed up. Uh, it wasn't the only former expat to taste success. An actual, an actual British trained horse won. Tom uh, Marquand, Tom the Pom, they call him, don't they? And, Tom the Pom. Uh, one fifty in the morning, which I didn't quite get up for. I got up for Via Sistina, which is quite impressive. You can see the bags <laughs> under my eyes. But uh, post-impressionist won. Do you know William Haggis down under in Sydney? He's nine from 16 with his runners. Well, funnily enough, it's only a guess, but I don't think he's taking horses out there that he doesn't think have got a chance. Oh, well, he has had a couple million. Fantastic <laughs> moon on him. Just couple. down the road. Just but but you think just down the corner. But you, that's a remarkable strike rate, isn't it? Because this was like five to They're two, eleven to four. They're not very good middle distance horses, are they? We know that. I mean, that's why we, when you know you get the Melbourne Cup and it's one, two, three, four, five. If we six, could go seven, back ten hours, Tom, and you told me that just before the race, I'd be I snapping up that, that eleven to four. I would have told you that. He won yeah. in, I'll tell you what, I've been called a few names that horse as well, but he'll stay down there for the Sydney Cup now. So look, it's really hotting up down there. We sort of Golden Slipper as well. Uh, my worry about Astral Bow is it was such a weaker race when she won it last year. I looked through it and I'm like, oh, that couldn't have won, that couldn't have won, and it, she ploughed through it. I, I, I get it, but. Roger Varian's farmed this race a little bit. I think he's run three of the last seven or something like that um, with some good horses as well. I, 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 I think uh, Sylvester's been down to ride him out. I know that. I mean, they think he's going well. They think he's got a very good chance. But it's all about the condition. I don't know. Until you've seen the first race, yeah, you don't exactly, actually know yeah. what it's going to be like down there. Yeah, if it's really, really heavy yeah. and really tiring, Astral Bow's got a chance. Dashing she's, Roger, she's a bit of support for that? There in black and white, is there? Sorry. Dashing Roger? Oh, it's not good enough, is just, it? It's just all about it's the ground It's a step up in class, though, for him. I just think he's going to struggle with it. Gray's monument for Rafe Beckett. Yeah, he likes back. the ground. What I would say is, I was at home during the Cheltenham week watching, and I, I made a note of ticking off the horses that the trainers said, "Oh, that won't like the ground." About twelve of them won. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I think it's yeah. overplayed. Yeah. To yeah, a, yeah. To a, it's still yeah. horses running, and it's still about ability. I'll at the tell end you of the one day. of them in, when we come to the Lincoln, and I think it will. I think it, uh, they might have got it wrong about that as well. I spoke to a trainer about one of the runners. Let's get a pick then, uh, John. If you were going for one here, which one would it be? I'm keen on Astral, though. I think uh, it should be uh, most forward for this. I think others might have uh, slightly bigger targets later in the season, but I think Astral Bow's got a great chance in it. Three places then on the opener, thieving each way bet for Johnny the Judge. Tom? I marginally prefer Charon. Astral. Astral. Two yeah. for Astral, two for Charon then in the opener. Right, let's move on, shall we, as we whittle through these Saturday races for you. And it is the Spring Mile that comes up next. Of course, this is the consolation race for the Lincoln at 3.35. Often a pointer towards what can happen. I seem to remember last year they were spread all across the track and then in the Lincoln themselves, they came up the stands rail. We don't really know, but uh, there's an interesting horse at the top of the mark. You've got last year's winner as well, Harswell Duke. Uh, John, what have you seen strong support for? Uh, Magic Memories is the one for money here. That's seven from 12. Uh, just a note on this race last year. Um, I was quite keen on Dirty Old Town and it was drawn low. And it was beaten about a mile. Um, so this will be a big indicator for the Lincoln. You know, if this comes stand side or if the ground isn't as bad uh, far side, so it'll be. Uh, I suspect the Lincoln market and this market will uh, look a lot different near the off. But uh, 
No, Magic Memories is the one for money here. A little bit for uh, Haswell Duke, obviously last year's winner, but uh, we're paying five places, so a fair spread. Nothing, uh, nothing getting out of hand at the moment. Well, I think we can all agree that five places is rather generous. Uh, Tom, I, you've put five up in the paper today, and I was expecting to see one in this, and you've swerved it. Yeah, it's way too hard for me, isn't it? Look, 13 to 2 the field, it's like, it's impossible. I imagine that when you get up in the morning, when you look at your tip, I thought this was the sort of market you'd be uh, come alive for, you know. No, you're going to watch it. Well, I, what I do is I, I, I look at it as, a, a, I, you know, is, is, is the 13 to 2 favourite a better bet than a 5 to 1 shot in a, in a six runner race? To me, that, it's a no-brainer because, I mean, this is, this is anything. Don't know the draw, don't yeah. know the ground, don't know who's fit. So I thought this was really hard. I quite fancied the horses on the far side, but as Johnny said last year, the horses drawn low had no chance. Yeah. But I quite like Thunder, Roar and Titian and all those sort of ones drawn on the far side. Yeah. But if it's like it was last year, they have no chance. I personally think they'll all come down the middle because I think that's what jockeys do nowadays. Yeah. And so I'm not that worried about draws these days because in the old days, when you used to have two groups and three groups, it was really clear where the best place to be is. Yeah. Now they all come down sort the middle. Sort of follow the leader a bit. Exactly, yeah. sort of in an echelon type thing. Uh, so I, I don't tend to worry that much about the draw. I just thought it was really hard. I, I ended up, well, I didn't ha I, I will have a bet on Magic Memories because I just like the form. We'll come to it later of that race at Newmarket at the back end last year, which was won by Dashing Roger. Yes, on ground, on again, ground that slot was very ground. Bad, very bad. He might have been on the Golden Highway. He went right up the far side. Magic Memories missed the break. It's become such a rails track, the Rolly Mile, yeah. isn't it? It's remarkable. She, um, he missed the break. Uh, came through, you know, can, took a lot of energy to get into a good position and then got tired close home. So it's Gary Moore, isn't it? So, I, I, you know, I think, I think he'll run really well for Tom Queeley. When the 48 hour decks came out of this, Matt, yeah, I looked at Jamie Spencer being booked for Thunder Roar, who's got heavy ground form. He's a seven furlong winner. I think it was the, it was the card that Liberty Lane on, was it, last year that he won? But he's drawn right over the far side and he's a seven furlong horse. He's bred to get the mile, but he hasn't really showed that he wants it yet. On this sort of ground, you want to be staying a bit further than the mile today, yeah. don't you? Absolutely, you need to be a bit of stamina in your breeding. And like Tony Cole is a good trainer. But I like horses that come back, like year in, like Haswell Duke yeah. and Maison, third in it last year. Arthur's Realm. Yeah, Haswell Duke had a good pipe over at Newcastle. Yeah. But I, I do like magic. I was at Brighton that day, working through Brighton in summer, and it was like heavy ground. Yeah. And Queeley just it gave him a peach of a ride. Mm. It, he just. He looked like he had a little bit of an awkward head carry. Yes, he's a but bit. He, I'm not convinced totally no, by him. No, I just. I, but Brighton, he won well, and I thought, well, it's probably not the best of races. Yeah. But then he did back it up at Newmarket, yeah. and I thought, well, there's definitely something under the bonnet there. Yeah. And you say, there's something about you this morning, Batch. I think it's a glass. It's a glass. <laughs> you, you are yeah. a bit more studious than your form study as well. He knew I this was is, coming. He uh, thought I'd. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, my wife drove me in this morning. Have I got my specs anywhere? My, my punting might improve. I've got to mention Dylan Cooner. He's got three yes, runners. Yes, good three old run. Dylan. Very good trainer he is. Very. He's going to go places. He's got three runners. A dirty old town who, uh, who Johnny, Johnny writes, mentioned, yeah. and expressionless. Uh, who actually beat a horse that's running in the Lincoln very easily at Epsom. Came from a mile back, got hampered badly. Both of them went off. Dylan, yeah. Dirty Old Town came back, but Expressionist went off last season. If he's back to the form of Epsom, he's got a chance too. We've got Liberty Lane for him here in Titian, haven't we? Because mm -hmm. uh, was fourth to Liberty Lane and Sonny Liston in that race on, on St Ledger weekend. He was second in this race last year as was well. Was he? Oh, yeah. There you go. Was that when he was with Haggis or was he with Julie Camacho I then? I can't remember know. anyway. The viewers will know, but he used to be with William Haggis. Something of an underachiever, if you like, but it's gone on to good things for Julie Camacho. Right, well, my head's spinning. Johnny the Judge, as we've been talking, has anything got back? And what do you actually like? Is it, is it the dirty old town? It is. I'm going to give him another chance here. As, as uh, Tom's mentioned, Dylan Cool is a brilliant trainer. I think uh, better draw here. Be a nice, nice patient ride. I'm just slightly worried about the mile, but uh, with five places, we'll give it. We'll give uh, Dirty Old Town uh, an each way bet. <laughs> I'd love to see Dylan Cooner win. He's the right character of the game, isn't he? I mean, you get the feeling he just loves it being here, doesn't he? He's, if you ever meet him... Was he a him, pilot? Wasn't he a, an yeah. air, wasn't he a... His dad told me a story, I think, but I, we had a few, so I've got forgotten about it. <laughs> no, no, he was, a, he was a pilot for... A, you was know, he? he? was driving flying planes all out of South Africa, all over the world. It's yeah. been a great move coming here for him, hasn't it? Oh, of course, absolutely. He's got a big yard now. Yeah, yes, absolutely. Some good two-year-olds apparently coming out of there soon. Uh, of course, we've got the Brockles B today. If anyone likes anything in that, let us know. I'm sure the community's going on about that. I spoke to Dominic French Davies yesterday. I think pretty much expected to go one better than last year with the favourite in that. So pick time. This is hurting my head. Uh, I probably will be interested to see what Jamie Spencer can do on Thunder Raw. 
Because he'll just, surely he'll do what Spence is known for, isn't he? Well, he'll hold it up, that's for sure. That's for sure. <laughs> you know, I, 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 I saw the low draw and worried. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> hey, he's mustered from the front. He just yeah, doesn't yeah, do yeah, it very yeah. often. Uh, so he'll, I'll, I'll chance him, I think, although 30 to 2 is short enough, I reckon. For I was interested in the source. money for magic memories can, from the yard it comes from. So I, I'd, I'd go for him. I that think. was it, Cephalus. Uh, Caught the hat trick yesterday. We'll watch out for the puns with him. But <laughs> it, it, uh, Gary's showing what he can do with these horses, isn't he? And is that the one for you, Bats? Yeah, uh, yeah and Maysong each way at a big price. Ooh, okay. Yes. A horse Alice that... Haynes, is it? Maysong? Yes. Yeah, he yeah, used to be yeah. with Ed Dunlop, didn't it? He's got Arthur's. Oh, that is a project horse for me. I like these horses that sometimes move from big stables, littler stables. They just get that a little bit of extra tension and yeah. care in it. Keep those glasses on, Bats. Okay. I'm telling you, it's doing you the world of good. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Should we go jumping? And we've Jumping. mentioned, of course, new. You're in your here. element now, Matt. Oh, here we yeah. go. Here we go. I mean, the more proper blimey. racing now. We're going proper racing. You might need to give, might need to give him a. <laughs> might need to give him a sleeping pill. All right. Okay. Two forty at Newbury. This is a really good race. Johnny's alluded to Heltonham being the William Hill boost on Saturday. Oh, they got a pescally good record with these boosts and getting them beat. Are you being knocked over for it yet, John? Of course, it's up to fifty quid, isn't it? Up until about midday. Yeah, the sixty four has proven really popular. Uh, we opened this horse up 7-2 to two on Monday. Obviously, there was uh, about 14 or 15 entries last day. This race has, has cut up quite a bit. So we, we're doubling down here, trying to get him beat in the day of the race book and the anti-post book. is uh, It'll be no good, no good as a result. I think uh, Galahad Quest on this better ground is uh, is slightly too big there at 15-2. to two. I, think, uh, I think you could go well. I was chuckling there, John, because he's going to get a lot of love on this panel, I think. Yeah. You've put him up, obviously, as one of your selections well, today. Yeah, I'm a little bit surprised he's still the outsider of the field myself. Yeah. Because on his Warwick form last year on good ground, when he jumped really well, and Warwick's a, a good track, it's a hard track for jumping. Yeah. Tom yeah. Scudamore was on him that day, if you remember. Yeah. And he, he had the, one of the most enjoyable rides I think, he's, of he's, his career, pretty much. It was so smooth. Yeah. And, and uh, he didn't probably like the heavy ground. I think it was at Ludlow or Taunton last time, over three miles, I think it yeah. was. So he's, he's, I, th I thought he was, he's only three pounds higher than that Warwick run. And I thought Newbury would suit him. And there was things against all of them. Obviously, helpman has got a very good chance. But I mean, he just loves the mud. He does. Well, he? we'll talk about him. As we've been talking, in that 15 to 2, oh, it was 8 to 1. It's now gone in at 15 to 2. And is he the sort of horse you back each way? Because they're giving three places here what instead of the two. Is he a sort of each way horse going to have quest? Yeah, well, look, six, six, bet, runners, six, six, six runners, yeah. Groundwoods yeah, will be important I mean, to him. Obviously, they've, they're all very... I don't really fancy Gustavian, and that probably means that'll go and win. Now that's the one I didn't really fancy. Mm. Solo beat That's All Right Gino and Boot Hill at Newbury, uh, Kempton last year. Yeah. All his best form is at Kempton and Sandown and Ascot. Yeah. But he did run well here over two miles once, and he's a classy horse with Freddie Gingle taking five That's off. a valuable five, I think. Very valuable five, yeah. yeah. Nichols is mustard in these type of yes, races. Yes, he is, yeah. So I wouldn't rule him out at all. Sir he's got, Psycho yes. has a little well, this bit... this is the Heltonham form, right? Yeah, the Heltonham form. He's not that far behind him, is he? Heltonham's up... Eight pound difference, I think. Yeah. Oh, look, Heltonham clearly loves Newbury. One very easy. Had last to be time. I think he's just got a bit more to come. I think there's, he's got, there's he more could, there. He's a big Probably boy, isn't he? There's more, there's more there, and I think he. It's just a ground thing with him because it was heavy last time, and he loves that. You're back in the boost batch. I can tell this. <laughs> you've, you've taken the money. Have you, you taken, taken the, the money? I've taken the six I, to I've four. I've taken the glasses <laughs> off here. <laughs> well, I've taken the six to four. <laughs> well, I tell you what. So <laughs> you're not worried about the. I mean, no. Dan Skelton no. yesterday. You were there. Everything he ran. Everything he's run for the last two weeks. I just think when, all, when your horses are firing like that, <laughs> sometimes we can use the ground a bit too for excuses if they're not I running agree. great. And like good horses, nice horses, we're going, and if horses are in good form, they just go and do I, their stuff. Who did I see yesterday? One of the jockeys, he said, if you can't run on that ground at Newbury, yes, you can't run on any ground. Yeah. Right? It's just like good ground. You know, yeah. any horse can run on that ground. So mm. to say it's fast, it's not fast. So he looks, and he's got a very good chance helping them. Yeah. Just thought at the prices, Galahad Quest could run well. The fact that Eaton Clean is out shows you that it's drying underfoot. He's something of a mudlock for Kerry Lee and that team. Uh, Gunsight Ridge is a horse that's had his supporters over the years. Yeah, he was he was strong favourite to beat Long Press on his one day at Exeter. I, I've got a confession to make. I backed him that day. Oh, did you? I backed yeah. Long Press. Yeah. <laughs> As you always do. <laughs> As I always do. He ran a cracker the other day, didn't he? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He ran yeah, a cracker yeah, the other day. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah uh, just does he stay two and a half properly? He's very keen. He's a strong yeah. traveller. 
I'd be, that's the only thing I've got against him because Ollie Murphy is, I presume Sean Bowen's riding him, is it? It's got, he's, he's, he's well handicapped. He's definitely got the yeah. ability. I think the horse that beat him at Sandown last time, Etalom of Dan Skelton, yes. is very good and might win the two mile race at Red, The Red Rum. No, the grade one. Oh. If, and if you're the other jockeys, yeah, the grade you, one. Yeah. if you're the other jockeys, you, your first thing to do is take him out of the equation exactly. and turn it into a go nice pace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You've yeah. just yeah. given us one for entry there. That's the Sandown winner last time out of Dan Skelton's called Etalon. Yeah, I think he's going to go for the grade one. I don't think Gaelic Warrior will go for the grade one. And then the rest are much of a muchness, aren't they? He won by... There's half. jumping round Cheltenham. Amazingly, the easier fences are now at Cheltenham, aren't they, rather than Aintree. Oh Aintree's a hell of a place to jump, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah stiff there. Yeah. Yeah. Park fences are big there, aren't they? Come at you quick as well. Yeah, yeah I, 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 it, I don't... I was I don't, watching yeah, yesterday where they literally walk through all the fences. I can't remember. It wasn't Newbury, but... The wouldn't have been Ludlow, would it, or something like that? No, it wasn't Ludlow. Where no, because that's quite a tricky like jump in test. Oh, Hexham. Was it Hexham? Was it? Oh, yes, Hexham. it was Hexham. Yeah. Like that high. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ups, upside down daddy yeah, We could get... Well, you <laughs> couldn't get over him. I could get over him. <laughs> tell what, I am like a salmon. I, do you go... <laughs> hey, one of us has ridden over the national fence. It's <laughs> not me and Tom, is it? <laughs> All right, OK, pick time then. Let's get there. John, uh, three-way play on, on Go Ahead Quest. Seven to one now. Is, yeah, Galahad quest uh, three places. Yeah, OK. I will be with Galahad as well. I think Solo has probably been overlooked slightly. Uh, so, again, I'm taking on the fab, but you're, you're, you're I boosting. I am taking the six to four. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> love it. That is, of course, the boost of William. And if you just join us, welcome along. This is the Morning Post. Myself, Dave Orton, Tom Siegel, Matty Bachelor, and Johnny the Judge Simpson, who will give us the market of the next race as we whittle along. And David Jennings not too far from joining us on the line. I'm delighted to say, ah! Here we go, it's Cammy's Trophy time. And uh, yes, one of the gambles of the meeting at Doncaster has been Montasib. Uh, put up by a certain price, was Johnny the Judge? Yeah, we're playing three places here. That has been really popular, 9-2 to two into 3-1. to one. Uh, A notable drift here on Baradar, who was uh, 9-4 to four favourite uh, yesterday. He's out to 4-1. to one. There's been a little bit of money for a day in Devon, uh, 14 into 13 to 2. But uh, I don't think this market is quite uh, quite finished yet. I'm, uh, I'm, I won't be surprised if something else goes off favourite. Uh, you know, the Montesibar, you know, it's, it's still not so, not so sure just yet. Here we are with handicappers taking on... Uh, proven group sprinters. I think we can. Well, there's sort of definitely one or one in there in Marshman. I think we can say. But this looks like a sort of graduation sprint to me, almost, Tom. Yeah, I mean, it's a listed race. I mean, it's a, the, the thing is, what I thought about this is normally I'm a little bit wary of handicappers running in small field listed races. There's a lot of pace in there. The two at the bottom, especially Sophia Starlight. It's go, they, go, they go hard. Nick Bradley's also. They yeah. go hard, and it's going to be. It's going to be if the ground is testing. It's going. You're going to have to get home. So that's why I, I marginally preferred Mark. It wasn't a, when it was five to one or whatever it was yesterday. I thought Montesib had a very good chance. So they will go quick in this. I think so. So that would help Montesib. That's right. He's got yeah. stamina. He's, got, yeah. he's the pick. He's my yeah. pick definitely because I think you'll love the ground. Haggis had obviously a winner in. Australia, but you also had the winner of the listed race at Wolverhampton last week with a with a debut on ninth, twelfth, yes. eight or something. Yes, know. yes, whatever. But he won. So the horses are running well. He's going to get strong pace. He's run twice over six furlongs last year. He should have won the Air Gold Cup, and then he did win the Coral Trophy at York. He just looks to me like he's going to be a sprinter going places that can make his marking group come. Hopefully, William's not listening to this. You know, when you said about you were marking off the horses that the trainer said wouldn't like yeah. the ground. He, I remember once speaking to him off air before we did a feature show in here with him, and I said he loves the mud. This bloke. He went, no, no, no. He wants good ground. So he's, he's, I was like, oh, that really confounded me. Yeah. It just shows you that they obviously he's, he's a, a good pedigree mover. man. He's a pedigree man, William Haggis, and he's by exceeding Excel, whose horses nearly always like fast ground. But this guy's so. an exception to the rule, isn't he? And uh, is it Kieran Fallon riding in? He today? is. Yeah. Who's just come back from injury, isn't yep. he? He had a spin at Lingfield yesterday. Yep. You could see Kieran back. Arazio, a lot of yeah, people fancying this. Graham Robbo's giving him a big up. Uh, has he just... His old form's good, but he's yeah. lost his way a little bit. That would worry me. Has yeah. he always been in these colours? The, yeah, yeah, the, the Roy Roy's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was he? Yeah. I, I'm trying to remember, because he ran in some big handicaps. Didn't quite cut the mustard in him, did he? But got soft ground form. Charlie Hills has a history of having his horses ready for this meeting. His yes. dad used to win, oh, yeah. you know, the Lincolns and stuff. That so was it, wasn't it? I saw Barry Hills the other day. Did, did you? you? He was at Cheltenham in the 
Lady Bamford's box, yeah. Was it? Yeah. Oh, Lady Bamford's box, was it? Yeah, Lady Bamford's box. <laughs> Hence the glasses, Tom. <laughs> Hence the glasses. <laughs> Hence the glasses. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, quite right. Who else did you see any other characters in there? Oh, Jelly Cooper, Jodie yeah. Kidd, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, Kidd, yeah. yeah. All your big fans. <laughs> they come to see Matty Badge. You do, of course, all the comp pairing in there. Yeah, that's all. right, yeah, yeah. Did you tip yeah. him some winners? Oh, I did, yeah. Willie Mullins, train him? Willie Mullins, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I've got to, what did I get to? You got Ballyburn home, did you? Oh, Ballyburn, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what was the also awesome finish on the third leg of the JP treble, the amateur race? Oh, oh, the I know the way you're thinking. The I like the way you're thinking. Oh, oh it's another way of thinking. Yeah, I, was, yeah. I was saying, all right, all the money you've got in your pocket today, put it on this. Oh, did you? This is thankfully not safe gambling, Will, but this is a safe gambling show. And uh, it's not ridiculous. Gentlemen. This it? is not a race to be, actually, in all seriousness, this is not a race to be going head down in, is it? Ah, they, lots of them can win. Obviously, Baradar was third in the Lincoln last year, wasn't he? Doesn't stay a mile on that sort of ground. Doesn't stay a mile. Loves the track. He loves forms the ground. here 1-3. Well, I fancy Baradar, and I'll put him up. But then, listening to you on Montesi... I'd put a question mark by the pace of the race. You said it's going to be a quick race. I think race. it'll be a decent pace. He's, yeah. ridden, he's held up, so surely that this has to fall yeah, into his lap. Absolutely. Could easily fall it's, in Baradar's yeah, lap. Def Could easily fall why in his lap. Why the lap. drift on Marshman? Or, and not so much a drift. Why the lack of support from Marshman? Because they've got another Nick Bradley horse in here. That, uh, that, I think that's the same ownership. They're going to settling was his issue, I think. Well, that might be it. That Correct. might be. But also, Carl did. You know, I always think it's worth looking at the comments in the paper. And he was negative on Holloway Boy and he was negative on Marshman. A little bit. Not saying they couldn't win, but he thought they were definitely going to improve for the runs. Unlike the chap we're about to speak about in about uh, half an hour's well, time. Well, yeah. I, I don't think that's the case with the one in the Lincoln, no. Yeah. So maybe that's why. It doesn't mean they can't win, no. but he was just a little bit negative about them. Yeah, uh, he is, of course, the one that's got the group form in the book. So look, this is going to be an absolute sizzler. Who are you with in the Cambridge Trophy? Often sets you up for your palace houses and all that sort of stuff going down. One of the Baradon might be getting teed up. For another go at the Victoria Cup and all that sort of stuff. He's no, a, he's I a, think this will be. He'll be do you think this will be? Do, yeah. First time up. He was third in the Lincoln last year. I think he'll be. He cruised in the Lincoln as well, be, didn't he? And from a bad draw, he was from the middle. He was away from the pace. So. He, he was drawn out of it in the Victoria Cup as well. I remember he Kevin Stockton riding win. at the time. Yeah, he just had no chance. But he did get his big one at Ascot, didn't he? I think it was the international on uh, King George Day. All right, those Warriors coming back out to play. Good to see. What's the pick match? I'm torn now between two. So I'm going to go reverse both. forecast. Dutch, uh, <laughs> Oh, yeah, you Baradar love the forecast match, and, don't you? Yeah, I love it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I love it. OK, all right. John, if you had to be with one? I'm very strong on Baradar now at 4-1. I think that's a huge price. We'd be dead against Marshman. Six furlongs or soft ground. I could see something else there in later. Oh, strong opinion on the camage. We absolutely love When's it. When's Johnny right. going to finish his man cave? It needs a bit. Yeah. <laughs> it needs you down there. I mean, I think it, it looks like he just stuck them pictures on this morning. Doesn't Stick it? some glasses on, John, and he'll leave you alone. <laughs> right? been, they've been there a while. <laughs> Stick some specs on, mate. They'll Give leave us a you nice alone. glass in the back. Glass? Glass? You could do that. Ugly. <laughs> You can't have a go at someone's man cave, man. He never you can when he looks like that. Actor. Don't have a rub another man's rhubarb there. I'll tell you, he's going to have it in for you now. Uh, yeah. Nice knowing you, Batch. All right, OK, let's move on. We go jumping again, and it's uh, one of the highlights of the spring season. This is the jumps finale, of course, at Newbury. It'll be the flat and the green and meeting coming up uh, in April, I think, isn't it, that is? But here we have wide open betting heat. So many angles in here. A little bit like the spring mile. This hurt my head, Johnny Simpson. Yeah, uh, this is probably one of the best back horses all week running here. Uh, we're playing five places, but uh, Lindy Riley was 33 to 1 on Monday in a place. Now, 5 to 1. I think this horse has just been uh, working to get a nice mark. Skelton on 5 to 1 from uh, 33 to 1 there. It's really, really strong support for this horse. Lovely form figure, isn't it? Three six five. Lang a dang in there. Scott, <laughs> Lang -a -dang, I don't know. I mean, yes. <laughs> he's got it. He's got it though, hasn't he? You know yeah. what I mean? He's 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 tar he's hitting the targets, and you know we lauded Christian Williams what he did with Kitty's light and the likes. Is this is how you play the game, Tom? Isn't it? I think, and he's got it right down the bottom of the weights. Well, yeah. I mean, she's got plenty to prove, but she's bred to want two and a half miles. She's bred to be a lot better than her mark. She's trained by a bloke that can't can do <laughs> yeah, anything but train yeah. winners. Yeah. Got a brilliant jockey on. I thought Harry Skelton was brilliant at Cheltenham last week. I thought he was absolutely outstanding. He walked in on that Thursday thinking he was La Ruby Walsh, didn't he, after that? Well, double. he should have. Made he, a big wrote, difference he, on Great Dawning, I think. Confident, listen, confidence is a great Correct. thing. It's, it's, you can go out there and you just 
You do what you want and it seems to pay off. Yeah. He's had his critics and he's gone too early on. Champion jockey. Absolutely. It's there, black and white. Well, a lot of races when yeah. everyone said he was going too quick, didn't well, exactly, he? No one said yeah. that about A.P. McCoy, did they? No. When he was winning from the front. <laughs> quite, quite. Well, yeah, he used to think the cab was mine. But you've got the feeling with Harry, uh, he's a confidence thing, I think. And especially Definitely, with yeah. Grey Dawning, that was the moment. Well, the two of them, I thought, in his head, isn't yeah. it? They were picture perfect, weren't they, those two Grey Dawning oh, yeah. races? That's yeah, how, yeah. if you could have put it in your head, how you're going to ride a horse. The confidence. That just sat in behind the, a good jump in front runner and pull him out of the like about Harry as well. you, you, when you're up there and listen you're going to be shot at people have their opinions should be done. but sometimes it's you have to do these things to find out what's best for the horse as well so you, by doing that you've learned something new yeah. so and it also obviously he's got the advantage of riding for his grow has, so yeah. they, they sort of yeah there's a team there they're, they're playing the down the trainer way. championship aren't they I think I was, Dan was quoted yesterday saying Paul won't be losing any sleep which, which I think he's got a good chance myself. I yeah. think he's got, think a, good he's got a good well. chance yeah. myself. Yeah, I think I think behind behind closed doors. What's the what, what, what's the market, John? Let's throw you a curveball there. Uh, the trainers championship at the minute. I mean, Dan was obviously ahead after Cheltenham. Yeah, I've actually just updated that this morning. Uh, first thing, um, it's two to five nickels, two to one now. Dan Skelton, uh, fourteen. Willie Mullins. I mean, he's going to have to win the national to to be taken seriously there. Uh, 50 to 1, uh, Hendo. But uh, yeah, there's money for Dan Skelton, 7 to 2 into 2 to 1 this morning. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. That doesn't surprise me. 7 to 2 was, was, was too big. It's like one of those trainers knocking them off because of the ground. I can't and they're all it. going to entry, aren't they? All those horses that won at Cheltenham, they're all there. He's and got one whether they load of the suits going for the Scottish National. He's got, he can win all these that, He's got Sail Away going for that, all those sort of horses. Yeah, yeah absolutely Scottish right. Champion yeah, he's been catching my eye, Sail Away, that's for sure. Uh, OK, we should, we should, of course, at that point, just before we go into our tips here, we've got a little bit of time, talk about Nicky Henderson. He, I, I think part of Team Henderson will be delighted it's eerily quiet because they can just get on with fixing everything. But at the same time, that's not where they want to be. They have got one runner today in the 2.10. And Johnny, it has been backed, hasn't it? Breaking my soul? Yeah, it has. It's uh, 14 into about seven. A bit of money there. Maybe the better ground will help that. God, that would be a fillet, wouldn't it? I mean... Well, he had a winner at Kempton last week, didn't he? He did. He did. But it's all. It's still not anywhere near... Oh, of course you know, not. Of course not. But still also, alarm bells, isn't listen, it? Listen, he had... Loads of well, not loads, but he had three or four run well at Cheltenham. He had the third in the Champion yeah. Hurdle. He had a horse run well in the per attempts. He had a horse run well in the Coral Cup. It's just weird, isn't it? Because Persian time at Kempton did hit the line well, didn't he? And it's just it's just a weird thing, isn't it? Well, There's such a big yard. There's there's barns here, there, and and listen, as a trainer, I should think I should think Henderson wants them all to get whatever that's going on. Get them all to have it. Yeah. Get it out of the way because it's. Some horses yeah. could be over there, some horses are there. It's... Nicky's got the luxury, of course, of having owners that won't take them away. You know, it's, it, yeah. it's, it's, other yards would be in, in a perilous position. The word is that they might have put their finger on it. Uh, so we'll, we'll hope that's the case. And uh, look out for breaking my soul in the 210 then for Ollie Harris. And it looks like the Harris Millions might have gone a little bit towards <laughs> that chat. Uh, right, we're going to be talking. Nine to two now, look. Which every time I look up, it's a different this is, water price. This is what you get on the morning post time. You should turn up every Saturday. I'm telling you. Did you put one up in this? I'm assuming no. you, you did. No, another one. It's a spring mile. No. no this is it's spring, a spring mile. mile all over again. Yeah. I've got a very moderate record in this race. <laughs> Does that not mean you should have a pop? Because these things turn, don't they? No. Well, I, I tended to think of. I tended to tip the Lindy Rileys. Yeah. Every time in this race, sort of the one that hadn't done it yet. And then your last one, lasses changing. will go and do it. Yeah. And then the good, th yeah. then the form horse goes and went and won. You know, your snow leopardesses and all those sort of ones. Do you know yes. what I mean? Proper good horses went and won up the top of the weight. So yes. I, I didn't, you know, Ella Alafanti has become a big price now, hasn't she? Considering Lucinda Russell's horse is rock and rolling yeah. again. Yeah. Uh, K, K Tara Tara. Sounds like. There will Japanese be... war film, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> you want to say Cave Tara Tara. Yeah. You want to say Cave Sarah Sarah, don't you? Got... They will be singing that, and you uh, should be if you're at Newbury as well. Uh, she was not far behind Ella Alafanti at S, and she... yeah. Alan King's got a good record in the race. Yeah. Alfie's Princess is from a horse, from a stable that's horses have really turned the corner recently. Sam Thomas's. They're right back in form, Good. having had a, had a bit of a, he had had a horse, horse run very yesterday, yeah. well yesterday. Yeah. I thought she might go well. She's beaten a few of these in the past. But you keep getting drawn to this Lindy Riley. Mm. You can't Riley. ignore it. it, it it's a very. You know, who it they, is, the money, it's. Yeah. I mean, it's. Skeltons. They had a very similar horse, a mare, 
legit well, how it lost yesterday. It was in front before the line and after the line. No more chances. Yes, the thing that pulled up the time before. Something yeah, like, got know, beaten right by back. Zane Knight. It was a three win. Yeah. yeah. But, but it was in front before and after it was, the line. It was. It was really unlucky. A rare stroke of bad luck for the team. But that was a was that a handicap debutant. I think it was. Yeah. yeah. From down yeah, the bottom yeah, of the yeah, weights, yeah. they're very similar. And the fact that I mean, of all the trainers that have got mares, Harry Skelton's got uh, Dan Skelton's got millions of them, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah. He had three yeah. running the other day at, at Kempton. Well, Roxano, he's always been mustered with them. Hasn't very he, really? good with you know. Uh, Boom Born, Miss Balba, all those ones, and he's come here with one down the bottom of the weights. <laughs> got oh, no we form. want this to win now, don't we? We well, want this to go in. a lovely price. I wish I was on at 33 to 1, put yeah, it like that. Right, okay. You sort so, of missed the boat, didn't I you? I know, you can't back it at 9 to 2, that's the problem. No. Let's go to Johnny, because you think that 9 to 2 will be under even more pressure then, John? I do, yeah, it's just getting shorter and shorter. It's one way traffic for this race. Uh, I'll just give uh, Larchman last uh, a mention there for uh, Harry Cobden. I think that horse has got improvement at this trip. I like won, uh, won better than the bare margin last time out, but uh, you have to respect the money for the skeleton horse here. You've got, ooh, Betty in the race as well, haven't you? Ooh, it was Betty. second to party vibes last time, despite hating the ground. That she was could... the one that got thrown out at Lingfield, is she that was, right? She was. She was behind the uh, oh, Ponsonby horse. Come on, Dave, give yeah. us a bit of Frank. Oh, Betty. <laughs> not very impressive. No, he, he's good at it. You, you are the Frank Spencer of racing. Oh, Betty. Yeah, there you go. Better. It's the glasses, Batch. It's the glasses. It's the glasses. <laughs> it's like, oh, he needs a bear eye and we'll be just leaving him in front of the camera for you. Uh, yeah, party vibes, Henry Daly. Um, Richard Johnson owns that, doesn't he? The Richard Johnson. That's it, yeah. Racing Richard Johnson, yeah. That's the colours, isn't it? That might yeah. be the essay, Philip Hobbs and Johnson White. Yeah. He's okay. doing well. He's had a couple of winnings, didn't yeah. he? Yeah. She's, I like her. She's had two wins at Market Race and Wincanton on two courses that probably wouldn't suit her. Yeah. Step up in trip is going to help. So, yeah, she's won on two tracks that this is going to suit her and the trip. I tell you what I like, down the bottom, Drumley Spud. Yeah. Ben, ben Paulins. Paulin. Good each way price. Good form. Carlisle third. Didn't finish the race. I was, she looked a little bit laboured. I guarantee yeah. you this was the plan. Yeah, but I'd forgive anyone a... Yeah. I backed her when she fell at Stratford, well. typically. Yeah. I backed her when she fell at yeah. Stratford. I thought she was nearly going to win that day. I don't know whether that form's good enough. Oh, in fact, that, He's uh, also Coco, in good form yeah. as well. Coco Mademoiselle, is that the horse of skeletons that's been winning recently? She, yeah. she beat, would have beaten that in that race. Yeah. So, interesting shout. All right, that's the Mayor's final as we conclude our Newbury the Saturday round. Right, let's go to the big one then, shall we? And get a look at what is going on with the Lincoln. And the headline here at William, it is six places you're going to get. Five to two. Woo! OK, here come the Irish again. Again, Johnny Simpson. Yeah, there's uh, a few gambles today. Uh, the lads who were trading the, the Lincolns, oh, Chasmini, three to one, 11 to four, five to two now. You could have got 16 to one before this horse ran at uh, the Curra. Um, it's been one way traffic. Um, so I don't know how, I don't know where this will bottom out, but five to two seems really short to me. A horse uh, drawn, drawn low. You're banking on this being really well in. Uh, Liberty Lane is quite weak, having been uh, a really strong fancy for this race uh, from the Antipost point of view. Uh, well, there's two who have been back to the six places, Blues Emperor uh, and Betevia. Uh, so a fair spread of money uh, away from the favourite, but uh, I'm not sure where this price will uh, will bottom out. Nine to four now. You should have seen our faces, I think, John, as you were talking there. I was looking at Batch, I was looking at Tom. We were all looking a bit bewildered at this market. It seems like a very good moment to bring in our Irish deputy editor, David Jennings, who waits on the line, not just for the Irish angle, but has, uh, have you had some Euros on this fab for the stacks, DJ? Uh, I haven't, no. I fancied AWOL, actually, earlier on in the week, and he's obviously came out. But uh, what a plan from Fozzy. Like, I thought it was interesting when he was interviewed after the race on, uh, on Monday, and immediately he said, oh, we're thinking of going to Doncaster on Saturday. And, you know, five days later, it's a, it's an audacious plan. But a five to two, it looks like it might come off. Yeah, morning, DJ, to you as well. You're looking nice and smart there, DJ. Yeah, where What's are you off to, DJ? I am working at Navin later. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a work to wear day a suit? Today, so... Do you have to wear a suit at Navin these days? I always I've... try to look my best. I've seen Navin. Yeah, I always try to look my best. <laughs> He's got shorts on under that, I'm sure. <laughs> I've nothing on underneath, Matt. <laughs> you sound like you're nice and refreshed after Cheltenham, DJ. Some sterling work for us as ever during the week there. Um, well, t tell us a little bit more about this horse just at the top. He's he's obviously relatively lightly raced, but he's not young horse, is he, or anything? He's been around. Yeah, he actually broke his pelvis as a three-year-old at the dock, and he missed an awful lot of time. So, Bozzy is not one of these trainers that gets carried away about his horses. He's quite a realist. He's not really a dreamer. 
And when he kind of talks one up, you really do have to take notice because I remember even over the years, you fancy horses that he trained and you'd be ringing him up for preview quotes and you'd be kind of hoping that he's going to be real positive and he'd kind of knock you back down. You'd be like, oh God, what did I back this for? But with this uh, Chesame, straight after the race, he was kind of like, you got the impression when he was talking to Gary O'Brien on, on racing TV on, on Monday that you're kind of going, he actually would have been disappointed if he was beaten in the Irish Lincoln on Monday. And I think that tells a story in itself. I like the way he, he traveled, but I also like the way he finished his race because he's a real strong traveler, but he actually saw it out quite well for a horse to travel so keenly and so well. So um, yeah, it's just a case of how, how he came out of the race, if he came out of the race okay. But do you really want to be taking five to two about a horse in the Lincoln? Like I know Tom was pretty keen on Liberty Lane and like you can make cases for plenty of these. Um, I can understand why it's favorite, but I don't think I'd want to be taking five to two. Mm, there you go then, there's the word from DJ. Uh, when was the last Irish winner of the Lincoln, I was just thinking? Oh, that's, that's I, I know, that's a that's toughie, That's too isn't hard, it? that is. Uh, uh, viewers, that's one for you. Or uh, We've got DJ now type, t- typing away, hopefully, and trying to find it. I can't think of it, but it just shows you that it's not. this is not an often a route that is explored at all. Uh, let's get some tips up from the crowd and ask the panel about some of these. We've got some social selections coming in. There's last year's winner, Migration. Uh, the often used stat, no horses won back-to-back since Babur in uh, 1957 and 1958. Got that right somehow. And Joanne, a previous winner as well. Where are these selections from the crowd? Here they come. And it's always Leachy that opens it up. Good morning to you, Tom. Thunderball each way and the gatekeeper, the Balmoral winner. Uh, Thunderball for you, Tom. Yeah, both got decent chance. Both they were... Thunderball beat the gatekeeper at Newbury last, at Goodwood last year and was yep. thrown out after beating the gatekeeper. They're very closely matched. They've both got good form on soft ground. Yeah, I can see them running well. There's no problem with them at all. I spoke to Oliver Cole about him yesterday and he said he might need another run. I'm just about to weigh him. I asked him later in the day if he'd weighed him and he was very coy about whether he'd weighed him or not. But they, they're going there with what they think is a horse that can land a biggie this year for sure. Uh, Johan, each way. Ryan Gledo, morning to you, Ryan. Uh, 14s with Hills at the minute. Johan, last time uh, we saw him come out in 2023, he won the Golden Mile. Uh, he's won Matty. this as well, isn't he? He's won this under Sylvester mm. D'Souza as well, so the old party getting back together, isn't it? Johan, he's tough. Matty? Yeah, I'd see what, I like one down the bottom, Gary, so the four-year-old. Kale Surprise. Yeah, goes on the ground, got sort of... Potential to improve. And a Gibson ride in that one. Yeah. And, uh, What's it called? And Alpha... a Gibson. Alpha Crucius. <laughs> Seven pound off. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's a specs badge. It's the specs. Alpha Crucius. I do Here like Liberty, Liberty Lane. Good run at Donny on the St. Ledger Day. And I didn't ask you for your tip. Yeah, and I'm bounce gonna... <laughs> back after the new market. Oh, I think All right, so, so you've yeah. given us two tips as well there. You've, yeah. you've bounced off this. Disney. The Disney account uh, thinks uh, that Blues, uh, Blues Emperor beat Chesame last year at the Curra. Disney uh, account. That's interesting. This is one for DJ, isn't it? Blues Emperor Murtagh coming over as well, DJ. Yeah, I have the answer to your question as well. The last Irish winner of the English Lincoln, I make it Saving Mercy in 1984 for Derwent and Walter Yeah, Spielberg. remember it well. 14 to 1. Yeah, what's not even born? <laughs> oh, well, Come bad on. turn it in. That's ridiculous. He's had our paper round, really. <laughs> Just to rub it into you, granddads, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, I'm feeling it at the minute, I'll tell you. Uh, okay, do, uh, do we give him a chance, DJ? Yeah, uh, Johnny obviously does tend to target these Lincolns, especially the Irish one, he's a good record in, in, this, in that in recent years. Look, he kind of, I thought he ran a cracker at the Curra last year in um, the Cambridgeshire. He was second to Corridor, the horse of Dermot Wells, who kind of rattled off, I think, three big kind of premier handicaps last year. Uh, Blues Emperor was second that day, Wesley Joyce rode him and was claiming seven. Um, Look, he's, he's a kind of a strong traveller that'll be up with the pace. He'll handle the ground. I'd imagine he will be one of the ones that'll be in the firing line throughout. And, and he certainly got a chance. You'd imagine it's 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 unlike Johnny to kind of, you know, skip an Irish Lincoln with a horse like this and go for an English Lincoln. So, um, yeah, Ben Cohen in terrific form at the moment. A really good young jockey as well. So, yeah, I, I can see you can make cases for Blues Emperor. Obviously, Chesame is favourite. Um, I, I think it's wide open. All right, cheers, DJ. He looks like he's been really well backed. I saw some 14s yesterday for sure. Let's come to Tom now. Uh, right, Lincoln from the start. Is it just Liberty Lane you've put up in this? No. Uh, I actually tipped Chazime to win the Irish Lincoln on Monday, thinking that he was had no chance of coming over here. And then now to see him 5-2 to two for this. is, is, is a bigger price to win the other day in a worse race. 
it, without the penalty. So do you think it's a little bit after Lord Mayor's show? Or? No, I think. Well, he's, he, he won, did he win that he well? Did, he did. He win it. Well, he won it very well, very easily. He'll so not like a lot the was ground. taken out of him at that not moment. A lot the worry for me on Monday was that he's also can take a bit of settling, isn't he? So well, this is a better race, isn't it? It's just yeah. a better race, and he's up in the weights, and he's he a did shorter finish price. strong, as DJ said, though. And yeah, also, I'm not a draw guy, but he's in three. I think he is. And who knows whether, you know, that's, that might be good, might be bad. As I yeah. say, they'll probably come up the middle. But if all the pace and the gatekeeper is in... Well, this is the key to the race 17 or me. 20, or is yeah. he? He's, if um, you remember him in the spring mile, this is the Balmoral winner of Charlie Johnson's. That was on Champions Day, the last time we saw the gatekeeper. He was fourth only in the spring mile. Big price for the spring mile, yeah. I know, because I backed him in it last year. And he went tearing off like a hare. The only thing I'd say, Dave, is that I do a lot of these races. And people tell me it's all about the pace. And then I watch the races and it's not about the pace at all. It's about going the even pace. It's about going the right pace. If you go on the side that go too fast, you tend to lose. Yeah, yeah okay. This you is tend... exactly why Tom's here for us this morning. So you've got to go the right pace. So I don't know, you know, I don't do all these pace maps because they, they put me off more winners than I've ever... Do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. it's about going the right pace. Well, it's not I, going about too far. If you go too fast, it's the easiest way to get a horse. There was you a horse know, at Cossack Dancer. <laughs> <laughs> That had to get a mention, didn't it? Oh, we'll, yeah. we'll be mentioning the harsh, national fences soon. That was man. harsh, wasn't it? <laughs> that was harsh. All right, Burning the top of it was yeah. a great ride. You're right about these pace maps. And of course, they're of course the indicators of what might lead in a race. You can get them on all sorts of different websites out there. There was a horse yesterday at Lingfield. I was on Sky and I previewed the first race and I said, this, th th this will be held up. It needs... Yeah. If they went from the front. Yeah. And you're just like, after 30 seconds, it blew up. It, but it doesn't always, of course, but you can't always trust them. Of course. You just don't really know. So yeah. you, you say we, we try to dissect races, but it's, it's, you just don't. Really yeah. The more mature the horses are. What the I would say is I did happen, them. as I say, I was at Newbury yesterday, and I did bump into Andrew Balding, who was there at the same time. The, the and he was quite keen on vet, Vetiver. This is, again, a meeting that Andrew does well yeah. at. He's had horses run well in this race before. She's a listed winner. Yeah. Uh, she was fit in the Balmoral to the gatekeeper. She did have the advantage of a dry. I said, oh, she's not good enough. He said, no, no, no. Had, was having none of it. Yeah. He was saying, yeah, she's got a decent chance, Vetiver. So there's, you can make a case. Look, Liberty Lane's out to seven to one. That was a good, that was good advice, wasn't it? Telling people well, to back we'll get five. to him in just a sec, because <laughs> last week on the show, Robbie Wilders was here, a suffering hungover Robbie Wilders. But he put up, he, he, you called him a pest, Johnny Simpson, didn't you? Because he puts horses up at big prices that often go off at least half of it. And that's the case with Vetiver. She was 25s when Rob put it up, now into 10s. The pest is coming for you. He is, yeah. He, he, he seems to find the value on these uh, these big handicaps and the lesser races. But uh, yeah, it's strong each way there at uh, six places of Etiver. Right, uh, I'd okay. give a mention to uh, Latam here. I think uh, the connections have done well with a, a similar horse last year in the uh, is it significantly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's a really good early season form for Haggis. I think at 12 to 1, I think he's got a chance. Julie Camacho, of course, he snuck home in the Irish Lincoln, didn't he, this time last year? Uh, OK, uh, selection time. It's not it's not just Liberty Lane, but give us the case of Liberty Lane. I'll tell you what's been freaking me out when I've been watching this. It keeps getting bigger, Liberty Lane. That's worrying. But listen, I don't I see I don't see any negatives. Like Same. soft, two from two on soft ground. It's one at the track. Yeah. One first time out, but two best races nearly of a fresh. Yeah. Trained for the race. Been gelded, which could improve him or not. Well, I think it probably will, because again, he was a bit keen, wasn't he, when he was trying to group level Dave, last year? I've got to stop you. It's now nine to four. Yeah, uh, nine. It's, it goes nine <laughs> to four, five to two, five be four to, two. to nine before we finish. Make your this. mind up, Simpson. You're doing our heads in. <laughs> go, just go seven to four, Johnny. Just go seven to four. Oh, well, I should say for the punters, go threes. Uh, a reminder that this isn't the boost. Of course, it is at Newbury. It's Heltonham in that two forty race. You get six to four. It's still live. I reckon Let's, if Johnny could change now, he'd boost this one. Would you, Johnny? Well, I'm not sure. Well, I'm not so sure. I think we're, we're, we're going to get filled in here, no matter what price we are. It's just one-way traffic here. Tom, you want to come back on this show? Claxons have just gone on at William Hill headquarters. Yeah, exactly. I could hear Dave Lowe, the senior producer, falling off his chair out there as well. I think <laughs> do us a favour. Uh, right, okay. Selection time. There was another that you've put. Yeah, up I, that it was a very, crashed. very big price. It was a very big price yesterday. It's not such a big price now. I think, I think he'll drift back out. But I, mean, I, I like Jenny Candlish. Horses probe. I don't you remember if you remember probe last year. One yeah. big handicap at Newmark. Kieran O'Neill rides it. Yeah, same same, same owners. Colours. Uh, one and seller two starts ago, but did win it by about fifteen lengths on the bridle, and then ran in the dashing Roger race the, with the magical memories. Yeah, yeah, okay. And came from miles back, totally drawn on the wrong so side. So watch that back, basically. Yeah, watch that it. back, and it he, he finished off very well. Had some good form in Ireland when trained by Jessica Harrington. Just the type of horse. 
that could run well in this race. But normally, this race goes to a classy horse these days. Do 86 rated handicappers really win it? No, but he was 40 to 1 or 33 and to 1 yesterday. And he's so. now 14s with William Hill. You know why. OK, DJ, give us the top pick. Uh, I didn't know Robbie Wilders put up Vetiver. I thought Vetiver was really interesting. She should not have won at Carlisle last year, given the problems that she met in running that listed race. thought she did really well to win. Um, a bit like Tom, you just wonder, is she good enough to win off this type of mark? But when she was kind of 12s and 14s during the week, I thought it was a big price. Um, look, the favourite deserves to be favourite. The way it's going at the minute, even on the exchanges, it's really rock solid. Five to two shot on the exchanges. Only nine to four now with, with William Hill. Like, it really is being hammered. Uh, what price is it going to go? Like, could it go off like 30 days or something? It's mad. But uh, at the prices, I'm just about with Vetiver very each way. If Johnny Simpson has his way, it's going off even money, DJ. Uh, OK, picks. Uh, Tom Siegel still happy. I like Liberty Lane. I have always liked Liberty Lane. I'm just a little bit worried that all the Burke horses are, uh, seem to be doubling in price this morning. If you morning. read Graham Robway's article, it suggests that the stats do not bode well for this yard but then again he tips it's crazy. it so he had a winner, typical, had a winner in France Rod. yesterday he had a winner yeah, yeah he yeah, did yeah the Midland Park horse yeah. it's not like they're yeah. not running well they're running brilliantly yeah. alright ok I'm Liberty Lane as well uh, what about you Matt yeah Liberty Lane and I'm going to take on a favourite you you're taking on the favourite? Taking on the favourite. All right, it's the spec batch, I know it is. <laughs> All right, OK, that's the Saturday racing done. We'll have the Irish angle after this. Reminded that before we go to the Irish Angle, uh, we'll keep DJ on the line for this though, because uh, William and I are sponsoring the whole weekend up at Doncaster. Absolutely great to see. And there is a 305 sprint handicap tomorrow. Uh, that, that, that was a curveball for you, chaps. So well, this will text you. Well, this wasn't in the email, so you can help me out of this. <laughs> I'd probably, I'd we got the run. Wise. If the runners come up, I can help you. <laughs> okay, all right, let's get the market up. And uh, I think we're going to see a Kevin Ryan horse, unsurprisingly, uh, early season, bad ground. Kevin Ryan are going to be Won fit, it last year, they? Ali's, Ali's dancer. dancer. OK, is that, and is that your fav, John? We're paying uh, four places here. I mean, uh, this market is uh, yet to get going at all. I, I'd imagine uh, the, it'll look completely different uh, coming off time. I don't know what happens today with the draw, the ground or whatnot. But, uh, yeah, starting point, Ali's dancer. Four to one, as Tom says, last year's winner. I think we'll just uh, let and see what the market makes of this today. All right, we can see the three hundred five. The market, going on the market the ain't got going here. Yeah, we're still working at Donny. Yeah, that... <laughs> here we go. Uh... You had to say it, didn't you? <laughs> the producers were waiting. There's some old favourites here. Chairman of the board will do for me. I think he ran in the race last year, and he just loves There's the lots ground. Of, lots of core special Dakota Gold woven. They they all run well here. Wob wob wob. Best wob, name wob, horse wob. in training. Wob wob wob. Yeah, absolutely superb. Uh, DJ, have you had any look at this? You you, however, like consummate bro, do read the running order. I thought it was really tricky. I'd be surprised if Ali's dancer goes off as short as nine to two. Um, you know, claimer on boards uh, has been out of form when we saw him last, but obviously does tend to start the season well. I thought Nebworth had a small chance at sevens. I remember when Nebworth ran at Royal Ascot actually a couple of years ago in a two-year-old race. I remember in the preview coach Richard Hughes was saying he thought it was one of the best juveniles he's had. Uh, hasn't really worked out that way, but. Uh, I still think there's a bit more to come from Nebworth. Uh, look, it's an open race. You couldn't have a strong fancy in a push. Around about 7 to 1, I thought Nebworth was interesting. I remember that as well in the week leading up to Royal Ascot. I think Matty Williams et al were all over it, weren't they? Yeah, a Richard, horse, uh, Richard Hughes's horses are going well. Uh, I, I'll give Chairman of the Board a chance. He's on a decent market. Love the ground. He's an old warrior, Tom. Uh, doesn't win very often, but I thought Woven might run all right. Yeah, a horse again that will like the ground. Former David Simbacor, of course. Dakota Gold for me, because I love Dakota Fred on the Gold Diggers on the old channel. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was the specs. I thought it was the specs. Yeah. All right, OK, now we can get to the Irish angle then. Uh, this is really what he's here for, because it's Navin today, DJ. You're dressed for the occasion. And I imagine you might be expecting to see Graham... Um, what was I, I going to say? I was going to go for one of the owners, but I've forgotten his name now. But they're all trained by Gordon Elliott, I can tell you that much. And uh, he'll be interviewing plenty... Uh, yeah, um, it's 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 one of these days. It's actually a big day in the in the Irish Jockeys Championship because 
Jack Kennedy is only four clear of Paul Townend at the moment. Like he's on 111 and Townend's on 107. And like 111 would have won so many jockeys championships over the year. I think it's only maybe one or two. 111 wouldn't have won. And Jack Kennedy has already got to that. But yet he's only four clear. And he's going to need to be more than four clear going into Punchestown, you'd imagine. But he's got a look like he's got some really big rides today. He's got a one to two shot in the first. He's got Rainbow Trail. He's got uh, Instant Tendence, who's around about just over even money in the second. He's got uh, Light Keeper, who's around about six to four. Uh, and then this 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 match race, which looks an absolute corker between uh, Chapeau de, so- de Soleil and uh, Tuwu Tree, who was very impressive at, at Leperstown on his first start for Gordon Elliott. And then he's got hard wired for Ten Walsh. So he's got five rides that are all 11 to 4 or shorter. So it's a big day for Jack Kennedy. It's not the best Navin card I've ever seen, but it's going to be informative. We've got a kind of novice handicap chase final, but it's going to be a big, big day in the jockey's title race. That's very interesting, DJ, isn't it? I, I didn't realise it was quite that close. I mean, Rainbow Trail, uh, Mr. Dedean has talked him up. I saw some four to five yesterday. He's been absolutely whacked, hasn't he? And he's got a good horse in the bumper as well. Yeah, he's two to five. Two to five now, Rainbow Trail, which is hard to believe. Uh, but look, he's got that strong form from the ace. He looks, he looks like he's going to be extremely hard to beat. And the bumper is actually a really interesting race. Um, We've got My Way of Thinking for Gavin Cromwell, who doesn't tend to have that many runners and bumpers, but this is owned by J.P. McManus, and it was second in a Leopardstown uh, Christmas bumper that has worked out quite well. The third horse, Cantico, obviously ran the champion bumper, but he's in it. There's a newcomer that's owned by Paul Byrne, who won a point-to-point for Emmett Mullins called Harbour Highway. And then you've got this master boy, Davis, who they think quite a bit of in Gordon Elliott's, mm. and uh, he was second, just beaten by Sounds Victorious, who was Johnny Deneen's eye-catcher of the whole Cheltenham Festival in the Champion Bumper. He absolutely flew up the hill. Uh, Master by Davis was only beaten ahead by him, but he's been a drifter. He's out to 3-1 to one this morning, Master by Davis, because all the money has been for the Cromwell horse, my way of thinking. I think that's probably going to be the most informative race of the day. We love our bumpers in Ireland. It's at 5.38. Oh, I love my bumpers as well. I'm not like the old fuddy duddies, DJ. I think I was born in the 80s as well. Um... That was a that was an interesting run, wasn't it, uh, from the Cromwell bumper also. I watched it back at Leopardstown and Cantico was behind him as well. I can see why the money's come. Absolutely. Gold in the Mountains won the race uh, for Martin Brazel. And we haven't seen him since, but I know Martin obviously thinks a good bit of that horse. We could see him maybe in the punch ten bumper. And even in behind, the Ford horse was Prince Garda Trois. And even like his nibs, who ran quite well yeah. in the bumper at Gorham Park, uh, finished like well beaten in seventh. And there was horses in behind train by Peter Fatty thinks a bit of as well. So I'd say it was a decent bumper. And I think this is going to be a decent bumper. But I think Massive by Davis is too big of a price. I thought that was a really good run to punch his head. I think they're going to make more use of him here. I think he's a proper, proper stare. I think stamina is, is his trump card. So I'd be at the price side, certainly be with Master by Davis. Let's just hone in on that 358 race. And this is a card, when you said it's not the strongest card, but it is for punters quite a pivotal card because some of them won't be wanting to go near a Doncaster. You know, they'll be looking at the banger card because they'll still be properly in jumps mode. And this does look a match, doesn't it? And it looks like Gordon's is being very well backed. Yeah, this Tawu Tree, uh, I think is how you pronounce it. It's, it's very well named. Uh, but um, he was like workmanlike when he won his point to point at Linkstown he won it for for um for Sean Doyle, Doyle that day but stayed on really strongly and I'd say to be honest he took them a little bit by surprise in that maiden hurdle at, at Leperstown because it was that race it was the Monday it was very strange it was a Monday the week before Cheltenham yeah. and it's that two day meeting at Leperstown now and uh, it looked on paper like Rathgall Boy was sent off I think long odds on for Willie Mullins ran an absolute like disastrous race altogether. But this Tawu Tree, who was back from about 12s and 14s into 7 to 1 at the off, Jordan Gainford rode him. Jack Kennedy actually rode Gold in the Rivers, who was sent off a bigger price of 12 to 1. But he won by 27 lengths. He could have won by 47 lengths. It was an extraordinary performance. Like, it, it was one of them performances that it's very hard to weigh up because the favourite ran a shocker and the second favourite in the Paul Byrne colours ran really poor as well. So you're kind of scratching your head. We gave him a racing post rating of 136, mm. which you probably had to do given he won by a hundred, by, by ter, uh, 27 lengths. But he bumps into Chapeau de Soy, who was probably one of the Willie Mullins kind of novices who could have potentially ran at Cheltenham only for he ran so poorly in the in the grade one at Nace back in January. He ran in the Lawlers and Nace. Yeah. There was a lot of people fancying him to run well. Like, he finished sixth. He actually didn't jump well at all that day. Patrick Mullins rode him. He never got into any sort of rhythm. He only beat a couple of horses home. But he was only 11-1 to one shot for a grade one. 
I'd still slightly favour Chapeau de Soleil. I thought he was really impressive when he won a Clamel uh, back in December. And they're getting very close together in the market. And I think two out three might end up being the best horse in the race. But I think maybe today, Chapeau de Soleil might just have a bit more pace than him. Mm, OK, one to watch then, 3.58. A really good card at Navan. Loads of shorties. Doubtless you're doing a multiple. We move on and we have a look at the Grand National again. Now, we've done this as an anti-post pick, of course, already on the show a couple of weeks ago. Uh, Paul Keeley straight after the DRF at Dublin. I've uh, got some fancy prices about I am Maximus. And Johnny Simpson, we're going to look at your worst results currently for a market that has absolutely come alive on April the 13th in Aintree. It has, yeah. Uh, since Corrach Rambler finished a uh, really good third in the Gold Cup, he's now 5-1. to one. Uh, And he's our worst result by a mile. Uh, I expect the, the support to dry up, though, in the next couple of weeks. This is not the sort of horse, you know, the once a year, the, the sort of casual punter will be, will be looking at. They'll be looking for a bigger return for their uh, for their bet. Uh, but Corrach Rambler, I am Maximus, Vanillier and Meeting of the Waters, those are the four uh, losers at the moment. Um We've got a few that were keeping the right side of Panda Boy, uh, Kitty's Light. I thought had a really good race at Cheltenham on ground. Who'd have hated? And then potentially uh, Rachel Blackmore's ride, Minella Indo. That cross country being called off might be a blessing in disguise. We're uh, sixteen to one, well out of the way of that. Uh, but uh, for the moment, we don't want Corax Rambler. Yeah, Corax Rambler. Tom, of those four, which one would you be uh, ducking if you were a liar? Corax Rambler for sure. A lot For of sure. people talking about. I mean, Keeley said he was out on his feet. Paul did, you know, in his column this week. Um, he, he, he might have been. He did. He did lose some ground on the horses in front of him. Up. I thought I thought it was a get it ready run for Chelsea. He's for, for extremely Adrian. talented, isn't he, man? I thought he, I thought they were getting him ready. It sounds ridiculous to run in the Gold Cup as a getting ready run run for the. Tom, Tom would 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 that not really worry you though? Like I was I was in the grandstand. I I, I was watching Cora Trammler and I thought coming down to the last, I said this horse is actually going to get quite close to galloping the champs. And maybe as you say, it was a prep run and he blew up, but he was legless in the last fifty yards. Like like if me and you started fifty yards from the line, we probably would have beaten Cora Trammler. Um, <laughs> no no no. There's no, an no, image. No. Hold on, Dave. <laughs> I've seen you run and you've seen the size of me. That is not going to happen. I had more chance of beating him, didn't I, in my, in my ski boat? I, I was just, I kind of said to myself, passing the line, Cora Trambler cannot win. It's four Grand weeks, National. though, isn't it? So it's, a, it's a long time this year. It's is it? Four, it is. is it? it is. I DJ, you're bang against it. him then, DJ. It's always normally the first week. Oh, look, it's, it's the 14th or the 13th yeah, of yeah, April, 13th. isn't it? It's 13th nearly, of April. Yeah, yeah. It's a month nearly from when he yeah. ran in the, yeah. I don't know. I, they're very, I, th look, I think you're right. I think the Gold Cup, was a stepping stone to that. And the way he's ridden, they've had a bonus and picked off some prize money in the Gold Cup. I, <laughs> I thought he was the easiest winner of the Grand National I'd seen since Hedgehunter last year. He literally cantered through the whole race. Yeah, but DJ, I'm, you are banging against him, aren't you? No, uh, put it this way. If of he those ran... three, I'm, 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 of those four, I'm the, I think he's the most likely winner of those four by a mile. It's a strong opinion, Simon. Did you, for, for once, DJ, you can't get a word in. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. No, look, I, I would be with the lads. And I was like, Tom, I said, after watching the race last year, I was like, oh my God, he's going to take some stop in, in the race this year. And I remember me and Tom having a discussion before he did his anti-post price-wise for the Gold Cup. And it was a real tricky one because we both kind of fancied Gallop in the Champs. Um, I was saying I wouldn't be surprised to see Cora Trammler run well in the Gold Cup. And we both kind of agreed that it could be a prep for the Grand National. And going into the Gold Cup, he was definitely my idea of the winner of the Grand National. And even you know, through the races, that this horse is going to win the Grand National. But I just cannot get it out of my head how knackered he was in those last 50 yards. And when he crossed the line, I said to myself, while he is by far the most likely winner on form and the way he's, you know, the way he handled the course last year and like his rating and everything, I said to myself, after watching those last 50 yards, he cannot win another Grand National after that. Yeah, OK, all right, DJ. Um, uh, meeting of the Waters. He's definitely not 12 to 1, is he? That's, no, that's for sure. That if he's 12 no. to 1, you that, might change that your mind. That needs updating that. Um, Panda Boy was my selection when we did the uh, anti-post spread of this uh, for Martin Brassel. And Kitty's Light as well. Kitty's is sort of holding his price. I thought it was a pretty good run in the ultimate if you watch it back. I thought it definitely wasn't off, you know, for that. <laughs> not in a million years. He, that was a, Speak you're your talk, mind, Dave. You're talking about prep runs. <laughs> they weren't expecting to win that. And <laughs> it, 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 you can still back him, but I think I missed the price on Panda Boy. 
Uh, he's just a horse that doesn't quite get over the line. I'm really willing him, but doesn't I can see it. it. I think he needs better ground. Pat. I think I think if it's very really, really soft, I'd be worried about him. Do you think it will? It's never good ground anymore. It's never be good ground no. anymore. All right, okay. Look, there are the liabilities. Uh, your top liabilities. He's current rambler now, pretty much into fives. I am Maximus John. Uh, I am course, Maxi Mums. I am Maxi Mums. <laughs> That could be Freudian. <laughs> Hang sounds, on a like, sounds like a website you shook me all into. This is like the school run. Exactly. It's, it's 11.09 <laughs> at night all of a sudden, not in the morning. Uh, OK, um, meeting in the waters and I am Maximus, John, for JP. They're two that can still come in, right? Yeah, I don't think we've seen the those two prices bottom out. I think that I am Maximus might be one of the uh, Mother's Day specials next year if it, if it runs well here. Yeah. There's a couple of shrewdies in this office that have got 50s about him after that leopard's down run. So he could go well. <laughs> Amazing stuff, isn't it? All right, that's the national. April 13th as we build up jump fans to that. Whew, okay, we've pretty much got there. DJ, before we let you go, thanks for coming on again, buddy. What is the bet of the weekend? Uh, I, I fancy a horse that has literally doubled in price since I sent my selection through. Uh, I thought into the park in that uh, race at Newbury today, when I tipped him up, he was three to one, and I thought three to one was a terrific price. And all of a sudden, he's six to one now in that two ten at Newbury. All the money has been for Cartoon and Co. Um, I can see the Cartoon and Co. angle, but I think he's been running pretty poor juvenile hurdles. Whereas into the park, I would have given a chance to if they actually gave gave him a chance in the county hurdle. Yeah. I do think stepping up and trip is going to be a big help to him. And like he only went up six pound for winning the Taunton, and I thought he was well on top of the line. I thought all his form was working out reasonably well. And he's 11 to 2 there with, uh, with uh, William Hill. I just think that's a cork and price. I know drifters are really worrying, but uh, I, I think he's got a massive chance. I think Philip Hobbs and Johnson White were desperate to get him into Cheltenham, DJ. I totally agree. I like everything about him as well, as does Johnny Simpson. And you're going to like this, DJ, because Johnny's been boosted, right? He has uh, into the park 8 to 1. So Ooh. if you go to Specials, my Jesus. And all the naps. Eight are available to one. There one o'clock, uh, so you can have eight to one into the back. I, mean, I must admit, I couldn't envisage that being eight to one when I passed this race up uh, on Monday. All right, tell us the uh, Tom, you're napping Liberty Lane. <laughs> not at nine to two, <laughs> I'm not because it's eight to one now, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely <laughs> drifting out. John, what boost have we got on that? I mean, it has been look, we do these boosts before we come on air, of course, all the traders set them, but he has literally been drifting in the last hour, John, hasn't he? Yeah, we, we can't give Liberty Lane away here. Uh, he's uh, eight to one in the uh, in the boost. In the boost, all right, okay. So there you go, all right. We've done um, well, DJ, me and you. We've got two massive drifters so far. 63 to one double. <laughs> and, and ironically, despite the fact I've got a terrible record with my naps, this is the week. Mine's the one that's being backed, and it's two, three. I hope I'm I'm on the right side of that, DJ. I think that they like this horse a great deal, and I'm not sure about Chapeau de Soleil. I think he's had his problems, and uh, this guy can improve past him, I think. So that'll do for me. Nice six to five shot. I just need a winner, and. Uh, what price it boosted to that, Johnny, by the way? Six to four, Dave, six to four. I mean, I was hoping for a bit of twos, really. Six to four, but look, again, we'll try and get that one over the line for you. Uh, Matty Batchelor. Regent Stroll for me in the bumper at Newbury. Very valuable bumper. Son of Walk in the Park of the famous Denman breeding. Yeah. And one at Ascot, the second and thirds come out and run well, and one of them ran in the Cheltenham bumper, six mile bottom, but. They took at the table. Save for this, isn't he? 59 grand to the winner, this. Is it? This bumper, yeah. Whew. yeah. I think Coney Gree running this one, yeah. We should have worked for Goss, so, shouldn't yeah. we? Do you know what I mean? They, they're always putting up the prize. Work. All right, did Coney Gree win? No, he ran in it, I think. He was right, just okay. over the top when he ran in it. All right, okay. All right, that. Uh, which nap are we going to, sorry? Yeah, we've done it. Into the park. Uh, they're, they're saying. No, the that's, that, no, no that's, that's DJs. We've got a double. Nap. Oh, Johnny was on yeah. into the park as well. Oh. I'm the one without glasses. <laughs> oh, gee. They both napped it. There's our racker for the day. Yeah. Liberty Lane. Yeah, two naps for into the park. Two, two naps, naps for the for the horse that's gone from three and to one down to eight. Eight to one about that. That's live now up until 1 p.m. on the William Hill website. Get your app out as well. My voice nearly went because I'm so excited about that. I'm backing it as well, 100%. Listen, it's been great. DJ, thanks ever so much. You look nice and fresh again, man. You're going to need to because we've got to talk about City of Troy before we actually let you go. Uh, there's so much talk about this. Did you go to Aidens in the week? I wasn't, no, no. Uh, Connor Fenley, my, my able assistant, went to uh, went to Bally Doyle on Wednesday. Uh, I've read all about it, though, and uh, listen. 
Dave Troy and Henry Longfellow, but he's going to go for like a derby trial, probably the Bally Sacks, I'd imagine. And I thought he was quite impressive in the airfield. He's a real strong stayer who they just bounced out and let him do his thing in the airfield last season. Um, and I was quite impressed. I think he's going to be your kind of maybe derby type. I could see him being placed in derby and maybe win the St. Ledger at the end of the season. So maybe one of the not so familiar names like your City of Troyes, your Henry Longfellows and your Diego Velasquez's. I think Grosvenor Square could be a horse to follow. He's 25-1 to 1 at the moment for the derby. I could see him running a big race in the derby and maybe turning into a St. Ledger horse. And that, let's just... Well, that's great. And I hopefully you guys are writing that down. Uh, DJ, let's stick with you. I mean, they are talking about, like, winning puissance. And, like, he's so talented, apparently, this city of Troy. He could be running the yard. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny. I remember uh, doing um, a column with Johnny Deneen after he had won on his debut. And Johnny was talking about City of Troy as though he was the next big thing. And I remember saying to him, I said, I was, I was reasonably impressed. I wasn't blown away. And he was like, I just loved the way he hit the line, Johnny said. And, and I thought in the superlative as well, it, it's that last kind of 200 yards or even 150 yards where you kind of go, if any horse actually does tackle him, not only does he have the, the ability, he's got the mentality and he's got the stamina as well. And uh, you just hope it goes according to plan in the Guineas because you just have to go back just to last year and, and just remember what happened to Augusto Rodin and Little Big Bear in the Guineas. It can go drastically wrong on the day. And if they did get, you know, an absolute hailstorm like they did last year before the Guineas, you would be a little bit worried about him. But look, he's going to take the world of beating, I'd imagine, City of Troy. He looks to have no chinks in his armour. So uh, let's just see what happens. We've got some City of, Stro uh, City of Troy specials, Johnny Simpson, haven't we? Let's have a look at those. Uh, I mean, I, <laughs> he's going to run in the Grand National and win it. They're talking about absolutely everything, aren't they? I mean, dirt, of course. We, we know he's bred to do it. Aiden talks it'll be effortless to him and all that sort of stuff. But I'm surprised he's as big as he is with you for the Guineas. Yeah, it's going to sound like I'm uh, reading a, a specials menu at the restaurant here. He's quoted for nearly everything. Uh, so for the 2000 games, he's four to six. For the Derby, he's six to four. Now, we are a little bit uh, under the market there. We've uh, laid our fill of him for the Derby. We don't want to see any more City of Troy. Uh, to win both, he's three to one. Uh, to win the Triple Crown, he's six to one. And if you want to get a little bit more adventurous and go uh, further afield, he's eight for the Ark. And then uh, Breeders' Cup Classic at the end of the season, 14 to one. Aidan has mentioned him uh, going on dirt, whether he does or not. But uh, uh, City of Troy's uh, quote is nearly everything. Quick word about this chap, Tom. I thought the six to four on was quite. Well, it was, whether I think it's the right price or not is immaterial. I thought it would be shorter, especially after all the hype machine that's come out this week. You were of a differing opinion. Uh, it's still the guineas, and I just remember back to last year when we were saying similar things about the two, and they were last and last, but and you know last and last but one, weren't they? Aidan well, has a that. habit of. He can, he's incredible because he can get horses to come back from deplorable runs to be brilliant horses. So even if you, even, you know, I don't know, it's, it's not my type of bet in, well, in a guineas. Wait until you see him jump a furlong, maybe. Yeah, yeah exactly. okay, all right. Uh, Matty, you must be watching City of Troy and just gone, this is talking about him being like they're Frankel, aren't they? Yes, it looks phenomenal when he's trained by a genius. So. We need this for the game as well, don't we? We need a, another poster boy, don't we, I think? Well, you know, we always have good horses. I mean, it's it's always, great to bring always... in that cross, though, isn't it? He's a little bit like Constitution Hill. He can make a front page, potentially, this horse. So it's important for the game, I think. Anyway, look, that's City of Troy. Now we can let you go, DJ. A sterling effort as ever. Good to hear from you, Dave. Best of luck today. That's it. The tie will be going on and uh, make sure you call home that winner of Gordon Elliott's in the 358. Uh, Johnny Simpson, great to have you back on the show, man. In the betting cave. Don't worry about it, Johnny. I like the background in there. I think you've done plenty of work on that. <laughs> Go and get um, some paint, Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> it's great to have you, John. And I'm hearing yeah. that, you, that that actually wasn't your nap. You can see the name has changed, like Liberty Lane's price in front of our eyes. Into the part was DJ's out to 8 to 1. What was yours, Johnny? Yeah, I was going to say, I think the uh, the graphic was uh, wrong there. Mine is uh, west of the bridge in the 130 at Bangor. Uh, this went into the uh, tracker with uh, alarm bells on after his run last time. I think uh, Skelton found a nice pop right here. So he's uh, five to one in the uh, in the booth. Five to one in the booth, a bet at Bangor. I'm tied a little card at Bangor as well. Tom, great to see you. Thanks, Dave. Feet up now. Uh, I've got to get back home first. Yeah, yeah, OK. That's a, that's a, bit, that's a bit of a trek. <laughs> yeah. Keep the specs on. OK, thank I'm you very you, much. It's been a pleasure to have you back in here. <laughs> Always. All right, get your love out for Tom and Matty, of course, and DJ and Johnny. I've been Dave Orton. This has been The Morning Post. Don't forget, like and subscribe. That's what it's all about. Go and get those boosts and have a great Saturday.